In this video, I'm gonna go over a few more Zeiss problems that are commonly run into. And specifically here, I'm gonna take a program that I wrote offline, load it up onto this machine and run it, and then talk about a few things you might run into doing this. So, I did the program offline, put it on a thumb drive, loaded the thumb drive in here. I'm gonna open up Calypso. I'm gonna find my measurement plan. Of course, it's gonna be, like I mentioned, on a thumb drive here and I called it CMM hiccups safe. So I'm gonna hit open and then open again. Of course, ICE programs are in a folder for some reason, um, unlike like basically any other software ever, but that's how it, it opens up. Now, what it's gonna prompt us to do here just about always is to change the stylus systems. So typically when you program offline, you have you know one kind of stylus system, however you name it, and then you bring it over here, you've gotta tell it what you actually have in the crib over here. There's two ways to do it. So it's gonna to default to exchange. I'm gonna hit okay. The way we do this is a select right here. I click this Z down and I'm gonna go here. And I'm gonna do the same thing, star probe. I'm gonna to go to Z down. So it's saying it's going from Z down to Z down, star probe to Z down. This is what I mean, even if you name them the same thing, they're not necessarily the, the same. Now, maybe there is a way to have them be the same, but this is how you exchange them. Now, what I do here is hit execute now, and it'll swap it over, and now we can run the program. Say we didn't do that. Say we forgot, we didn't know what we were doing, we hit cancel, right? So now we haven't exchanged the styli. It's not gonna run because it doesn't have the right stylus system in there. The way we change that, measurement uh, tab, measurement plan editor features, I wanna go to stylus system, stylus system, and now you can see what it is, and it's red with exclamation marks uh, because it doesn't have that loaded up in the, in the crib here. So what I'm gonna do, since they're all gonna be Z down, I'm gonna hit shift, and what you wanna do here is make sure you're on selected feature and go to Z down and replace all of these. Now, the second part to this, you wanna go down here to stylus and you have to change these as well. So I'm gonna do the same thing, change them all to Z down, hit okay. Now we're good to go with the stylus systems that are actually with the machine or in this case, already loaded up. Now, the first thing we want to do here is a manual alignment to tell the machine where our actual part is. So we go to measurement plan, base start alignment, hit OK, and right here, execute manual run. Now, I've intentionally programmed this bad to show you some you know, potential pitfalls. So in this case, we're going to do this top plane here, the blue on my part, point one, point two. And that's gonna throw an error because I only gave it two points in the strategy, which is of course bad because planes need at least three. I can override this by just taking a third point. And I'll go back in and change the strategy later, but I wanna show you what it looks like. Uh, it'll throw, it'll be purple on the uh, feature. Okay, so our next plane here. And uh, let me zoom in on this screen. There we go, do a fit to screen, and it's gonna highlight what I need to actually probe. So I'll come in here, take three points. All right, so that's our manual alignment. Now when we go to run a feature, let's say that plane C, and I execute, right, it's gonna go to the right spot and not out in space, okay? Now, let's open up the planner. We'll go to measurement plan simulation, and we're gonna take a look at it. I'll just hit this button right here, show CMM. All right, so we can see it's aligned just how it should be. Let's talk real quick. What if, for whatever reason, you can't align it on the machine the same way you wrote the program? So say we spin this around like so, right? It's not gonna match up right here, 
what we've got to do is spin the part in the measurement plan simulation. The way we do that, I'm going to click this little uh, box right here, right in the lower right. I've got to select the part so that it turns purple, and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees about the space axis twice. So now it matches what I've actually got on the table. I'll go in and do another manual alignment here to tell the machine where the part is now. So measurement, base start alignment, hit OK, execute manual run. And if you notice on the screen here, all these points are way out in space. Uh, that's where the part was. But as soon as I finish that manual alignment, it's going to basically figure it out and snap them all back into place. So I'm going to hit OK here. Now say I go just take a, a point right here. It'll show up on the right spot on the CAD model, which is good, right? So I want to take another one over here just to double check. Right, it's the right spot on the CAD model. So that's how you, you know, rotate it. You got to do it. Maybe there's another way, but this is how I know how to do it. I know it works. You know, two-step process. Go in the measurement plan simulation, rotate it or flip it or reflect it. However you need to do it, and then do a manual alignment, and you'll be good to go. Now, let's talk about some of the particulars here. Let's uh, delete this feature that I didn't really want. Let's talk about this plane with only two points. If I go to execute this, right, all by its onesies, right, it's gonna go in, take the two points, and then turn purple. Usually, purple means it doesn't have enough data to figure it out. In this case, a plane with two points in the strategy isn't enough. And it'll tell you right here, not enough points available for feature calculation for feature A, which is what I just did right there. So the way we fix that, easy, uh, go into the strategy and we just add another point. And then see how it's not doing anything right here? I can go to define points right there and add another point. Now I can also, since I already have the manual alignment done, I can go in and do this with the probe. So why would I want to do this instead of just clicking on the screen? Say you're trying to avoid something, right? I can't see this bolt and washer over here. So if I wanted to get super close to it and know I'm not going to hit it, right, I can do this and it'll show up on the screen. You got to have the manual alignment done though. If the manual alignment isn't done, you'll see points out in the middle of space and it's going to mess up your program big time, okay? I'm going to hit OK there. I'm good with this. Now, because I have this bolt right here, I'm going to go into measurement plan, measurement plan editor features, travel, retract distance, and for A, I'm going to set this to uh, 3 eighths of an inch. That way I know it's going to jump over this when it's just taking points, okay? Now, next up, I've got a position for this 0.75 hole, so let's open that up. Let me put a tolerance in here. So we got the feature, our three datums, A, B, and C. Let's go ahead and run this. So we're gonna execute and I'll let it go through and get all of the datum features it needs. It's gonna do those before it does that hole. All right, so it did that. We're gonna go to position. It says it's out by 85 thousandths. I know it's not out that far. Sometimes it'll be a huge number, but it's gonna be more than it, it should be. So what's going on here, and I see this a lot. Uh, so I've got a cylinder feature, and the strategy only has one circle path. So to get the position of an axis, which is what's implied with the cylinder feature, you need at least two circle paths. If you wanted the position of just a point, right, you could do a circle and not a cylinder, and that's totally fine. But when you're doing position of a cylinder, it's got to have two circle paths. Now, to fix it, I just click right here, do two circle paths. I'm going to delete that. Say give them 100 points each. 
And now I'm going to just execute this hole and it should update the position without having to go in and do all the datum features again. So let me slow that down just a touch. So now I'm going to go to characteristics, open this pro uh, position, and now we're at six thousandths, which sounds a lot better to me. That's really, really common. If you have a position that's way off and you can't figure out why, check the strategy. Now, if you wanted to just do a circle, so this happens when you're programming up the CAD model. If I do define select geometry and I click on this uh, hole right here, it's gonna create a cylinder every time. If I want a circle, I can go here to define circle on a cylinder, click, right? And now we got circle one and you could do position of that and you're just finding the position of the center of that circle. It's not exactly uh, as me approved, but sometimes you really need to do it if you have thin parts. I mean, it, it just makes sense. If you have like sheet metal, there's, there's no reason to try to get an access for that. You know, your, your stylus isn't gonna, might be too big. It might be thicker than the sheet metal or whatever thin part itself. Okay, next up, we're gonna look at this plane. This is the far side of the part. So I'm gonna hit okay here, go to my profile, right? It's, it's not giving us any information. I'm gonna execute this to go try to get some data on this side of the part. It's doing a line, which, which seems great. Again, it's gonna give us not enough points available for feature calculation and error with references. So it's gonna throw a, a purple here. I'm gonna open this up, see we've got no actual. So the first thing, I'm gonna take a look at this plane one. I'm gonna go to our features, plane one, strategy, polyline. But when I open this up, there's only one point. That's bad, right? Even though it scanned, it only got one point. So I'd wanna change this to 100 or some other number more than one. Hit okay. And ideally, you know, we want some more uh, information here. So why don't I do another polyline? And I probably made this point a little too low, so I'm just gonna grab it and move it. I'm gonna select both of these, hit this auto path switch, make a polyline. It's gonna wanna do 13, I'll do 100 points. Hit okay, hit okay, hit okay. And let's execute this. So you could be doing a polyline or a grid and only be taking one or just several points. So you gotta go in and check and see how many points it's really taking to make sure you're not scanning for no reason. If you're scanning a giant surface, like a big grid, and you're only getting you know, 15 points, you probably might as well just go in there and take the points, it'll be faster. Okay, so let's go back here. Profile, now we are getting a number, which is good. The problem is we should never uh, program profile or position from our base alignment. What we need to do here, click and then select our datums explicitly, A, B, and C. Hit OK. And then we're gonna get the, the correct number right here. Hit OK. And like I'm, I think I've mentioned this before, you can save this datum reference frame, say if you have a part with uh, more than one system, and then for the next one, you can load the datum reference frame right here, A, B, and C, which is pretty cool. Now what I wanna do here is run it, but I don't want it to go redo all that data, so I'm gonna go to run, I'm gonna uncheck clear existing results and hit start. So what this does, when you uncheck clear existing results, it's only gonna move the machine if it needs more data. So if you change the strategy, it'll go in there and redo it. Otherwise, it's just gonna recalculate everything. So if you're writing a program and you know, you've know you done five features and you got five more, you're kinda stepping through to make sure your clearance planes and all that are good, you can go here, that way it's not rerunning the entire program every time. Now you can go in just execute each feature or batches of features together but when you execute uh, a characteristic like a profile it's always going to go look for all the datum features which can kind of take a while so that just recalculated everything if i wanted to see the PyWeb report i can go to view 
multiple report. So here's my position and profile after I ran the program again. These are about where they should be. No big issues here. We took care of the position, took care of the profile, and we got this uh, offline program running on this machine, and then we rotated this around. A lot of different things to get this to work correctly, uh, but the offline programming obviously is super cool because you, know, you can do it on your laptop or some other machine that's not actually running programs. It is very, very helpful. So. Uh, that's all I have for today. Just a couple common things that I see people run into and, in, you know, moving from offline to the machine and running a program and in programming in general. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below.